Hello, Jeff Zwerink. Welcome back to Science Faith Connection, the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas and see how they relate to the truth of Christianity. I'm excited to have Dr. Ken Wolgamuth back on the show, and we're going to look at how the earth is designed to support life. Ken, good to have you here today. It's good to be back again after so long. <laughs> so I know uh, Dr. Ross has come out recently with a book, Designed to the Core, that talks about just the design across the universe, how it goes from the super cluster to the local cluster to our galaxy planetary system. And I know you've done a lot of work looking at geology and how the earth works. So where do you see or how do you see that fine tuning or design playing out when we're looking at the earth itself? First step is that the solar dust or the nebular dust that made up the earth is part of our solar system had particularly just the right amount of radioactive atoms, particularly uranium, thorium, and potassium-40, that gave the opportunity and caused the Earth to have just the right amount of those radioactive atoms to generate the heat in the Earth that was necessary. So that's the starting point. So, so normally, you think of radioactive stuff as being detrimental to life. Uh, kind of just map out a little bit more detail. Why is having radioactive material important for what's going on in the center of the Earth, where doesn't really the radiation doesn't affect life per se? The point is, is that as the Earth correlated, the gravitational heating of the rock and the material did not get it hot enough, and so those radioactive atoms that were mixed in with the stardust were just in the right proportions that it has caused the interior of the Earth to have a molten core. And so that's where the really significant piece comes in. The radioactivity here in this case is the issue of heating the center of the Earth, the core, to uh, high enough temperatures to be a liquid. So this is kind of like where we put radioactive thermal generators out on rockets as a way to heat things up. Effectively, these radioactive elements are heating up the interior of the core or the interior of the Earth so that it does what that makes Earth habitable. Well, the, uh, the final result with that molten inner, with a molten core because of those radioactive atoms, that has caused the Earth to have a very major magnetic field of a magneto for most of its history, for a lot of its history. But during the time window of that history, as cooling did uh, gradually occur, the very inner part of the core ended up becoming a solid because of the cool slight cooling and the just super high pressures. So now the core of the Earth is a mixture of a solid internal core surrounded by a liquid core that then transitions into the mantle uh, at, the, at, the, at a boundary between the outer core and the mantle. So, okay, so we've got structure of the Earth. You've got rigid tectonic plates on the surface. You've got a boundary between that and the mantle. The mantle goes down to this liquid core that has a solid inner core. How does that, why is that important for the magnetic field here on the Earth? As the Earth heated up and the inner core, as the core became liquid, the heavier elements that have the capacity to form a magnetic field, that is primarily iron and nickel, are those that can cause a magneto to occur, did in fact do so about three and a half to four billion years ago. And so we have had a long-term magnetic field throughout the life of the Earth. Then as the cooling began to take place over a couple, number of billions of years, uh, about a billion years ago, or maybe 600 million years ago, that solid inner core formed and between the interaction between the inner, the solid inner core and the convection currents in the outer core trigger what has turned out to be a very stable, long-term, uh, basically magnetic field. And the significance is the magnetic field surrounds the earth and it is what protects life from solar radiation and for, from the cosmic radiation that is completely deadly to any life on the surface of the earth. 
Well, that, that's something where you're touching on my research. You know, did uh, research in gamma rays, cosmic ray physics. And, you know, it is just startling to me when I recognize that if you were to take a uh, a plate or a detector, you know, a square meter in size, put it up on top of the atmosphere, you're going to get a thousand high energy cosmic rays hitting that plate. So there's an enormous amount of radiation that the magnetic field diverts away from the surface of the Earth, a lot of it up to the poles. And, and that's very critical for Earth, or yeah, it just eliminates a lot of that radiation, especially, uh, you know, I find that interesting that you said that right around 600 million years ago, because that's when large bodied organisms started arriving on Earth. I presume that's not a coincidence in your assessment. It certainly isn't. And in fact, the fine tuning of the nature of the concentration of, of the Earth to have that iron and nickel in the middle core has about five different parameters. They're very have to be at a very tight, limited value to, for the whole piece to fit together so that we have that long-term stable magnetic field that protects us. And there are about five different parameter or eight different parameters that I'll mention that are in Hugh's book. Number one is the Earth's mass needs to be very tightly constrained. The mass that's in the core of the Earth itself, that is that liquid core. The viscosity of the mantle is, uh, is at a very narrow range in terms of its transmission of heat up toward the surface. The thermal conductivity of the core itself, that is the rate at which the heat dissipates out. The initial temperature of the core when it was first formed four and a half billion years ago. And then the composition of the inner core and the outer core with that very high, almost 90%, 90, 95% iron nickel core, which gives us the magnetic field that is long, stable, and protects the all life. No, I, I don't think anyone disputes the importance of the magnetic field, Earth's magnetic field protecting life. But I do know when you look through our solar system, there are lots of bodies that have magnetic fields. I mean, you know, Jupiter and Saturn have pretty strong ones. And so what is it about, I mean, how is it that you're claiming that if other bodies in our solar system have these strong magnetic fields, what makes Earth so unique or fine-tuned in your assessment? It turns out of the, uh, what are they called the rocky planets, that is from uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, Earth is the only one that has a strong magnetic field that is stable and lasting. Uh, Mercury has a slight magnetic field, but it is far less, uh, has a far less strength than uh, the Earth has. The large planets have magnetic fields, but they are out beyond the range of where life could exist anyway, because there's no liquid water that is necessary for life. So the Earth is significantly in what is referred to, if you will, as a Goldilocks zone right here in, in uh, the right distance, exactly the right distance from the sun. And uh, to have this magnetic field that is strong enough to deflect all the massive amount of solar radiation and cosmic radiation that's ready to just kill all life on the surface if, if the magnetic field were not here. Well, thanks, Ken. I really appreciate your comments. You know, when we look at the Bible, we see that, as Isaiah said, that God did not form earth as a waste place, but formed it to be inhabited, that we would expect to find evidence that God has worked to design the universe and the earth so that it can be habited. And we find abundant evidence of that. You know, I'd encourage you to go to reasons.org. Check out Ken Wolgamuth's page. Search for W-O-L-G-E-M-U-T-H. You'll get access to a lot of his resources that he's produced that point to that fine-tuning and design. And also go check out Hugh Ross's latest book, Design to the Core, for a great wealth of information of how God has fabricated this universe so that we can be here and how we can use that evidence to go tell others about God.